Welcome to the second episode of this custom grad post tutorial. So in the previous episode, we did the basic setup to set the joint of the right hand. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to smoothly lure between two positions and how to mirror the right hand to automatically get the left hand pose. So if you are enjoying this video, please subscribe down below. This really helps the channel to stand out. And of course, you can support my work and get access to exclusive content on my Patreon if you want to become the best VR developer in the world. But with Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are left at where we were at the end of the first episode with here our pistol and the right hand pose over there. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to smoothly go from one pose to another. So let's go back to our pistol, select the grad and pose component and open it. Now, if you remember, all of the bones are set here in the set hand data function. So I'm going to create another function, but instead of directly setting here the local rotation of our bones and the position of our root, I'm going to do it step by step every frame of the game to have a smooth transition. So I'm going to call this new function public void set and data routine. Perfect. It will take the exact same parameters as this one, but be careful that it's not a void that we will need. It's a I enumerator. Perfect. So basically, a I enumerator function is a bit the same as a normal function, but it will play over the time. So let me show you. The first thing that I will add at the top here is a timer that we can set at zero. Perfect. And I'm going to go at the top of my script over there and add a new public float called pose transition duration. And we can set it at 0.2. Perfect. And now going back to the set and data routine, I'm going to do while timer is less than the post transition duration. So if it's the case, we will keep updating the finger position. And we can, of course, update the timer with timer plus equals time dot delta time and do yield return null. So basically, if we call the set and data routine, it will first have a timer at zero and will increase every frame of the game, the timer by time the delta time. So the time between two frame. And when the timer will go above the post transition duration, it will just exit this loop. So basically using this loop, we can just edit here the position and rotation of our bone inside and do it step by step. So for this, I'm going to need more parameter at the top over there. So so what we can do is actually copy and paste these three and now call it starting position, starting rotation, starting bone rotation. There you go. And now using all of these data, we will be able to learn from starting position to new position, from starting rotation to new rotation, and the same for the quaternion over there. So let's do vector 3 P equals vector3.lerp and here lerp from the starting position to the new position and here we need a smoothing value so if this value is zero it will return starting position if it's one it will return new position and if it's anything between the two it will give you the lerping value between one and the other so in our case we simply need to do timer divided by the post transition duration now we can do the same but this time for the rotation so quaternion r equals equals quaternion dot lerp starting rotation new rotation and give as before the timer divided by post transition duration and there you go now that we have the lerping position and the lerping rotation we can assign them to the finger bow so we can do h dot root dot local position equals p and then h dot root dot local rotation equals r and now what's left to do is to do exactly the same, but this time for the bone rotation. So in a for loop that goes from zero to the new bone rotation dot length, we can do h dot finger bones i dot local rotation equals quaternion dot lerp. And now for the first parameter, we need the start bone rotation i, the, the new bones rotation i, and the lerp is as before, timer divided by post transition duration. There you go, as simple as it is. Instead of above giving it directly the new rotation, here we are doing it step by step using the lerp function, as you can see. And now it's really simple. Instead of the set and data over there, I want to write set and data routine. Perfect. 
But now, as this is a routine with a high enumerator parameters, we need to call before start coroutine and give it these parameters. But now, we are missing some uh, variable because, as we did earlier, this function needs seven parameters. So we can fill them over there. So by doing instead of the final end position, the start end position, the starting end rotation, and the starting finger rotation. Perfect. Now we can do the same, but this time in the unset pose. So let's copy this line, replace this one. Perfect. But here we need to inverse the final and the starting. So let's do this like this. Final end position, final end rotation and final finger rotation. Perfect, now everything is set up. So we've basically made our own function that will learn between the position and the rotation of the bones and call it in this routine over there. And of course, when we are unsetting the pose, instead of the final and the starting, we are writing the starting and then the final. There you go, so now let's save and go back to Unity to test if this works. And there you go, now this will happen quickly, so be careful. So if I try to grab this gun, as you can see, this has smoothly changed the position. And of course, you can change the duration as you want here. If we go to the grab and pose, as you can see, we have here the pose transition duration. So if you want to better see the transition in our case, we can set it to one. And so if I click on play now, as you can see, we can better see the transition when we are grabbing the gun. But I think in my case, I will simply leave it to something a bit small like 0.2 as it was before. I think it is better. But now that we have transitioned from one pose to another, let's see how we can do the same, but this time for the left hand. So for the left hand, it's actually the same as for the right one. So instead of the right hand model, let's set the left hand model. So if you remember, it already had the end data component that will help us gather some data about the finger bones and so on. So for now, let's drag it under the right attach point. There you go. Now, as it was before, it's a bit too big right now. So let's set its position to dot 25, dot 25, dot 25. Perfect. So of course, we can already change the position of this end and of its rotation and of its fingers rotation. But I will show you next how to automatically get the left end pose based on the right one. So for now, let's skip this part and directly go into our script. So for our script to make this happen for the left end, we can go at the top and do public and data left and pose. And now if we go to the setup pose, I want to check if the end data that we have is actually the one for the left hand or the right hand. So we can do so by doing if end data dot end type equals end model data dot right. So if it's the right end data, we can actually call the set end data value with the right end pose. But if it's not the case, we can simply call the same function with end data, but this time using the left end pose. So to correctly change the end data using the left end pose, if it's the left end that is grabbing it. Perfect. And it is as simple as this. Now using this, we should be able to change the pose of our left end when we grab it. But of course, right now it will only take this pose which is not good so here don't forget to assign the left hand pose in the inspector so we can simply drag the left hand model over there and now if we click on play we have a little issue because as you can see it didn't get removed at the start of the game so of course if we go back to our script we need to disable it first so let's do left hand pose dot game object dot set active false like it was the case for our right hand and now it should be good if i click on play the pose have disappeared i can still grab with my right hand still release and when i grab with my left hand as you can see it works it has not the good position but everything else is working. So now the final thing that I want to show you in this tutorial is of course to automatically get the left hand pose based on the right one. So for this, let's go once again in the grab and pose script. So something that I've never shown you in a tutorial before is using a tool that we can use in the inspector. So let's do this for the first time ever on this YouTube channel. So at the top, I'm going to write using Unity Editor. So this will allow us to call some editor function. Okay, so to mirror the pose, let's go down below and create a new function that I will call mirror pose. So this function will take two parameters, a end data that will be the pose to mirror 
and another end data called pose used to mirror. Perfect. So basically, this first parameter will use the second one to change its value and get the mirror position. So simply for the position, we can do vector3 mirrored position equals the pose used to mirror dot root dot local position. And now we need to simply inverse the x axis of this one. So we can do so using mirror position dot x multiply by minus one. Perfect. Now that we've done the position, we can do the rotation as well. So quaternion mirror quaternion equals pose used to mirror dot root dot local rotation. And now for the rotation, it really depends on the 3D model that we have. So some 3D model needs to change their Y axis, but in our case, we need to inverse the Y. So let's do multiply by minus one and the Z axis as well. Perfect. So both the mirror quaternion has inversed in the Y and Z axis. So now that we have a new mirror position and a new mirror quaternion for the rotation, we can simply assign them on this pose to mirror parameter. So pose to mirror dot root dot local position equals mirrored position. And now do the same for the rotation. Pose to mirror dot root dot local rotation equals mirrored quaternion. Perfect. Okay, so everything is done. We have made a function to mirror the pose, but now the important thing is to actually call this function using the Unity editor. And so to do this, we are going to add at the top here using Unity editor. So this will allow us to call some Unity editor function to use this while we are inside the Unity editor, of course. But as we are using the Unity editor, this script will not compile when we are building our game. So a little tips to be able to compile the script even when we are doing this is actually to do hashtag if Unity editor, perfect. And now hashtag and if. So this means that only when we are inside the Unity editor, the script will read this line over there. And now the magic will happen if we want to simply call this mirror pose using the Unity editor. A cool thing that we can do is do hashtag if Unity editor as before. We can do and if just after words public static void mirror write pose. Perfect. And now simply to test this, I'm going to write in the console debug.log mirror right pose. There you go. And now if we want to call this function mirror right pose from the Unity editor, we can write at the top menu item tools mirror selected right grab pose. Okay, so basically we are doing nothing right now, but let's see if this works by going back to Unity. And now, as you can see, I have a new tab next to Windows. Oh, and I did a mistake here. Instead of tools, it's a slash that I want to write over there. Perfect. So this, so let me show you how this will make if we go back to Unity. As you can see, because we have written tools, mirror selected, right, grab pose. It will create here a new tab next to Windows. If we open it, we have here the mirror selected by grab pose that we have just made. And if I click on it, tada! As you can see, it has correctly written the mirror right pose text in the inspector. So this means that this function is actually called using here this little tab over there. And so what's left for us to do is call here the mirror pose. So another tip is to actually get the object that we are correctly selecting in the Unity editor. So we can do so by doing grab and pose and pose equals selection here dot active game object. So this selection dot active game object will return the game object that we are currently selecting. And now we can simply do dot get component grab and pose. Perfect. And using this new end pose, we can call end pose dot mirror pose. And so in our case, we want to mirror the right ones. So let's do end pose dot left end pose, end pose dot right end pose. Perfect. And now let's save and go back to Unity. And now the real magic will happen. So let's first select our object that has the grab and pose component. And now if we go to tools and then to mirror selected right grab pose, 
And of course, it has taken the good uh, rotation, as you can see right now, but the bones have not changed here their local rotation because I actually forgot to assign them over there. So let's go back to the mirror pose function. We can, of course, do for i dot length and copy the position. So do pose use to mirror dot finger bones dot length and simply do pose to mirror dot finger bones i equals pose use to mirror dot finger bones i dot local rotation equals the other local rotation. Perfect. So now if we save and go back to Unity, let's select our pistol, go to tools and mirror selected right grab pose. And so now, as you can see, the left hand has taken the good pose using for the right one, but we have a small issue. As you can see, it has not the good position. And so basically, this is just because here at the start, I first drag here the left hand model under the right attach point. But if you remember the XR grab interactable to attach component that we made as an attach point for the left hand and another one for the right hand that we can see over there. So in this case, if you have two attach points like I do here, you simply need to drag the left hand model under the corresponding one. And now if we go back to the pistol, go to tools, mirror selected. As you can see, it has taken the good position as well. So now everything is ready. The pose of our left hand model is perfect and is exactly like the right one. And so now if I click on play, everything should work for both hands. And there you go, guys. This is the end of this little tutorial series. And in just two episodes, we have made our own custom grab pose system. Now, of course, feel free to use these for any object that you want. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe down below. As always, you can grab the source code on my Patreon. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.